Hey everybody, Josh here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan, and if my camera work is a little more wonky than usual today, um, I'm suffering a very light case of vertigo today. It's just, I just rolled out of bed wrong and the world went, <laughs> and it ain't ever felt the same since. Uh, you know, I've got a couple Dramamine in me by now, pumping through the system, we're doing better, but neither here nor there. Less than 5,900 pounds, the 272 rear, you could call it a quad bunk, an L bunk, private rear bunk room, uh, Wildwood x Light coming over here. This is the predecessor to the very popular 273 QB XL that we have today at Halid RV. Um, overall, it looks to be pretty decent. There's a couple little wear and tear items and there's a funny thing going on, on the floor. Also, you're probably going to hear a very loud annoying beeping the entire time. Remember, it is not nearly as loud on camera as it is standing here in real life when we go through this thing. Now, as is pretty customary for my used RV videos, I like to get the scary points of concern out of the way first because visually, this thing looks absolutely fantastic. There's a couple little finer details I want to point out here. Now, um, what I'm not going to cover is like every little individual tiny blemish. There's a couple little things here and there. It's a used RV, but the, the things that are more overarching. One of the things you're going to hear regularly through this video is that annoying black box down there, which could be life-saving. And as if on cue, there she is. That is your CO detector. That is your like propane leak detector, basically. Helps keep your family from uh, being poisoned by an invisible and uh, odorless gas at night. So it's an important object. Thing is, it's beeping constantly and the RV has plenty of power. I've hooked two different batteries up to this to make sure that's not the case. So these things have a shelf life, they have a lifespan where over time what happens is they have an, an air filter in them basically that takes constant samples. I think this RV was used at a place that was fairly dusty, like most campgrounds. And I think the RV was used regularly and it got a little gummed up. And what kind of led me to that uh, conclusion is up top here, the air conditioner return where that little air filter is located, it's got some little dust bunnies hanging off the roof right there. And that tells me that this thing has, you know, been in a dusty environment being used. So chances are that detector needs replaced. Now, as far as I know, everything's in good working order. I haven't personally checked it out. We were always happy to check into that for you. And it is very minor. But I noticed some exceptionally minor uh, discoloration right down here below the refrigerator and some very minor swelling. And I've used the word minor a lot here uh, because it's, you know, not very severe. <laughs> That's what it means. But usually that is something that happens um, from like if it's been a little rainy outside, the backside of that refrigerator has a has, has a uh, air vent basically. And man, the medication is really causing my head to swim right now. I'm all dramamined and everything else up. Whew. Anyway. Um, what happens is sometimes a little bit of that kind of bleeds through and the moisture in the air tends to settle and that's the closest place where it has a chance. It kind of pools in that corner and it does soak right there just a bit. The other thing that I noticed in here is nothing that I can show you on camera, but I hope you appreciate, uh, despite I can't show you, uh, the, the transparency of it, no pun intended. And that is the fact that in here, there is a very, uh, slight, soft spot, a little depression right there. And I don't really know what caused it. Now, normally, I would say that's from a laminated floor breaking down over time. This is a stick-built trailer. This is not a laminated camper. Um, I don't exactly know how that floor would have been soft right there other than just some really extreme foot traffic because we are walking on 5.8 OSB. And it's, I suppose it's not impossible where two sheets of OSB met at a high foot traffic zone that they may have ground into one another and broken down a bit. But boy, howdy, is that uncommon. That is just not something that happens every day. But frankly, I don't have a better explanation because it ain't from leaking. There's no discoloration and it's in the middle of the floor. It doesn't come from the sides. It's very, very weird. And I've walked all over it six, seven, eight times before I did this video. It doesn't stop a 205 pound dad bod guy from walking through it. I just think you deserve to know about it. With the way my head is swimming right now, I'm about ready to take that CO detector and <laughs> to the moon, Alice. <laughs> that is not shower surround paneling, by the way. I'm gonna kick that thing. Um, the uh, That is a uh, just a, a white wallboard. 
So when you're done taking a shower, you want to make sure that you wipe that down and then you uh, turn on the uh, ceiling vent fan here in the bathroom to make sure that it gets all kind of uh, aired out. And by the way, all of the countertops in this are that same sealed edge press membrane material we're looking at here. Although the dining table top is actually a very nice kind of hardwood sort of thing. But this back here, this I think is the thing that, like this living room is so generic. It's got a front walk around, uh, or not a walk around I guess, but like an island style bed where you have an entertainment center straight in front of it. And it is a little bit dark in here because if I'm just gonna be blunt about this, the lighting in this thing kind of sucks. The new Wildwoods have incorporated much, much better lighting fixtures. Um, at least the bunk room does have plenty of these because the living room actually feels a little bit lacking to me. But in a way, that's not too bad if you're going to be doing uh, you know, some boondocking. More lights means more battery draw if you go clicking everything on. And if they're there, chances are you're gonna do it. But that sofa jackknifes down into a sleeper. And you see that you have the, uh, you know, the triple L bunk going on right here. What I really like about that is not just the fact that it could be used as a quad bunk, but if you've got a taller big kid, it's like an eight foot long top bunk up here for a bigger person to be able to sleep. It's potentially an adult sleeper, not just a kid sleeper. But what's really cool about this floor plan is it gives us, you see that sliding privacy door right there, it gives us the private rear room that I think you would, I think almost anybody would prefer. I think sometimes people, they, they tolerate an open bunk floor plan, but all things being equal, like I don't know about you, my daughter doesn't sleep like in an open air bed straight off of our living room. Um, you know, she has her own room. That's what's nice about this. This gives us the privacy of a two bunk floor, or pardon me, of a two slide floor plane without the second slide. Um, but you also see some dedicated hanging space in there. And speaking of storage. Across from the bathroom, and as we enter the bunk room, on the living room side of the privacy door, you have that extra thing right there. Now that could be pantry space. That could be uh, linen space for the kids. It could be a little combination of the two. It just depends on, I think, how you want to kind of pack everything up. Now, one of the things that I do try to do, um, like I wanted to open the microwave, but the RV, uh, the doors keep wanting to swing closed right now. So apologies. But I, I like to look inside of the stuff to see, do they bother keeping these things clean? And it looks like the, the fridge has been very well actively maintained. I don't know that the oven was ever really used. That's a pretty normal thing as far as most RVs go. The stove tap was used a little bit, and there's a couple finger smudges on the microwave. But again, normal usage, I don't see anything spooky here. <laughs> I'm literally sitting here with my breath held, waiting to hit the record button between beeps on that CO detector. Nice space for a wastebasket down there, by the way. And you see a clutter cutting shoe garage right by the entry door here. And as we work our way up, this from the factory had no TV. So the TV was added by the previous folks. They did not put in a swing arm TV mount, but I think it's good enough on a rainy day just to, to do something to sort of keep the kids, the little bodies occupied, you know? You've got a thing there. One of the other uh, things that they did here, it's almost like classic Forest River stuff. You don't see a lot of this anymore, but it has that just old school sleeper sofa headboard. No, no, I've always kind of liked them. But then again, I like having my little hidey holes. I like having little spots to stuff and squirrel things away. You know that, uh, you know, Scrat, the squirrel rat from Ice Age? I think I may have been one of those in a previous life. <laughs> Something else here that's kind of cool is you have remote control, like awning, uh, corner jacks, slide out even on this. You got that handy little wireless remote system right there. Now, uh, up front here in the bedroom, I, I think I'm, I doubled back and I misspoke on this and I was correct the first time. I said, oh, it's not a walk around bed. It is. Uh, the, the bed doesn't come directly up to the entertainment center, which is kind of cool because that means that you actually can put a longer bed in here if you want because this is a camp queen currently. But at the same time, if somebody wanted to say, no, I don't think that's a walk around bed because these gigantic, absurdly sized bedside stands come way too far down to call that really a walk around bed. I have to crawl into it. I can also acknowledge that I'm not really going to argue that fact. Either way, it is what it is. You've got to see it. Let's hop outside. And you know, if there were leaves on the trees in the background a little bit more close, I, I think you'd get a better idea of exactly how windy it is today. 
Uh, it's windy enough that even if this RV had a ladder, I don't think I'd be getting up on the roof. It is, uh, it is gusty and blustery today. Now, um, over here, it's not the world's tallest baggage door, but this is, I think, a very solid, respectable pass-through compartment. Now, it's not going to take uh, a rocket science to realize we haven't gone through and clean and detailed this RV. This literally just came off the previous owner's uh, vehicle. Uh, so you're getting a very fair, accurate representation, I think, of the physical history of this RV in, in some areas. Overall, I think the worst it needs is just a quick surface dusting. A couple points of concern we talked about inside. Uh, power uh, stabilizer jacks front and rear. And you notice on these right here, they added those JT strong arm stabilizer bars. I am such a massive fan of those things. They do a tremendous job of enhancing the stability of this RV, especially like, um, you know, if, if the kids in the rear bunk room have to get up and down at night, having those uh, four extra stabilizer bars right under the bed area will keep you from getting motion sick at night. I don't see nasty flaking or fading on the outside from like uh, wicked weather condition. What is that? What is that? Huh. Um, so they added, because that ain't factory, a front two inch receiver. I don't know why they did that. I don't know what used to be there. I'm wondering if when they reached their destination, when they unhitched, if that's not where they just slotted the hitch in there as a hitch holder. Since again, this isn't the world's biggest baggage door, maybe that was an easy way for them to keep the hitch uh, you know, at the campsite, which in a way, kind of smart. Like if that is what they were doing, I think it's actually very cool and I'm a little surprised I've never seen somebody else do that. Huh. Now the underbelly of today's X-Lights is enclosed. This was made before that change happened at the late part of the 21 season coming into the 22 season. The underbelly of this, it is open. It's not enclosed. This is not a magic four seasons camper or anything like that. And uh, pardon me, I have this thing where I hate seeing garbage just kind of fly through our driveway. So I'm going to pick that up uh you know to just kind of get it thrown away properly uh, that's something that just always personally bugs me anyway i take pride in my workplace um what i was getting at the underbelly's open the tanks are exposed but interestingly the water lines are not now again some apologies here i mentioned earlier in the video i'm having a little bit of uh, some some very light vertigo today i'm, I'm generally functional <laughs> as much as i have ever been generally functional but I can't really tilt my head up much past a level plane, so trying to get the camera up above my head to get you a shot of the roof, I just wasn't able to get a clear one. I started losing my balance and I didn't want to fall and crack my head open, nor did I feel like climbing on a ladder uh, having vertigo on a windy day. Um, what little I was able to see up there, the seals and everything looked really good. If you need extra pictures of something like that, if you need a salesperson to bring a ladder over to it and get you a 30 second sweep across the roof so you can see the seals, know that we are happy to do that stuff. And normally I would try to do that and unfortunately, it's just beyond my control today. So apologies there. So like I said, if you like this thing, give us a call. If it looks like it worked for you, we'll get you camping. Um, if you're like, eh, I like it, but you said there's a new one, right? I will leave you a link to the brand new one in the video description, unless I forget, and then leave me a comment and I'll drop you a link right there. Sometimes I say these things on camera, but what you don't realize is I don't just like record this, then go straight inside and upload it. I literally have 12 other RVs to record today on top of this one. So when I get to it, very possible I forgot. And again, I'm a little uh, medicated currently, I'm hoping um, the viewfinder caught everything a little bit better than I'm seeing in person because it's all a little bit warbled right now, which is a bit of a technical term. Uh, so thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for being a little bit understanding. Truly, truly appreciate it. We're family owned and operated. And when you're ready, we're ready. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.